The only job that remains is to derive our moment formulas using the limit process for integration. So let's take a look at our picture. I have F on top, G on the bottom, our range goes from A to B, and what we're going to do is we're going to chop A to B up into a bunch of smaller subintervals. Above each of these smaller subintervals is going to live a rectangle, which approximates a region of our lamina. Now, what we'll do then is we'll figure out both moments for the rectangle. We add them up over all rectangles, and then we take the limit as the base of those rectangles goes down to zero. That limit's going to be what we call our moment about the y-axis. So let's pull this apart. So I draw my picture. First, we're going to do the moment about the y-axis. So the geometry here is we're wondering about how well does this balance in the direction that my hand's going, back and forth. So what we would need to know is the mass of my rectangle times its distance from the origin. If this rectangle is living above the point x, then that's going to be the distance from the origin. To get the mass, what do we need? I need the density times the area of the rectangle. The area of this rectangle is going to be base times height. The base is what we're calling delta x. That's going to be the length of the subinterval underneath. And then the height is just going to be top function minus bottom function. So this is going to be the formula for my element of moment in the y direction. We're going to sum up all of these as I go through all the points xi that we've chopped up our subinterval into. And then what do we do? We put in our xi's. And then when we take the limit, we consider how things convert over to our definite integral. The summation turns into the definite integral sign from a to b. Delta x turns into dx. And then in what's left over, wherever I have an x sub i, I put plain old x. And you notice what comes out is our formula for the moment in the y-axis. Let's take a look at moment in the x-axis. What I would do here is assume if I have a rectangle, uniform density, the center of mass is going to be directly in the center of the rectangle. That's easy to believe because this thing is perfectly symmetric. So we would expect to figure out where the center of mass to be. You just have to cut everything in half. Okay, so let's think about what we're doing. I want the moment in the x-axis, so we're thinking going in this direction. Now, if I'm thinking of this rectangle as a point for purposes of center of mass, well, or moments, we want to know how do I get to the distance to the origin. In this case, the origin is going to be the x-axis. So that's going to be the midpoint of the rectangle. If I consider this thing as its center of mass, center of mass is here. Distance from the center of mass to the x-axis is the midpoint, which is f of x plus g of x over 2. Okay, so what do we need? I'm looking at my element of moment in the x-axis. That's going to be mass times our y distance. The y distance we just saw is going to be considered as f of x plus g of x over 2. Then what else do I need? I need the mass. The mass is just going to be rho times the area. And we already saw that the area is just going to be given by delta x times the difference in our functions, top minus bottom. So this is my element for moment in the x-axis. We're going to sum up over all of those along our interval a, b, as we chopped it up into subintervals. So we're going to have this when we put in our formula for the element right here. What happens when we go to the limit as delta x goes to 0? Summation turns into a definite integral a to b. Delta x turns into dx. And whatever's left over turns into xi going to plain old x. So we notice what's left over is going to be our formula for the moment in the x-axis.